Good evening, a very warm welcome to a special edition of News with Television Tonga. Tonga this week, a collection of the top stories during the week. Making headlines, His Majesty King Debo VI officially opened the Legislative Assembly this week. Honorable Prime Minister raised the importance of supporting economic and social activities. Pacific Partnership 2013 underway. Fiber optic cable arrives in Mokolofa. These are more stories later on in this bulletin. I'm Fatai Fenga with your program for tonight. His Majesty King Debo VI on Thursday officially opened the ordinary session of the Legislative Assembly 2013. His Majesty King Debo VI first of all expresses his gratitude to the Almighty for his guidance up to this morning's opening of the 2013 session of the Legislative Assembly. His Majesty also acknowledges the well-being of the Speaker, the Prime Minister, Cabinet Ministers, Nobles of the Realm and the representative of the people. In his royal speech from the throne, the king stresses the increasing need to work together in order to protect Tonga and the economy from the adverse effects of the global economic crisis. He says the essence of a nation's development effort is its economy and various efforts to ensure sustainable development for Tonga is appreciated. Additionally, it's important to support the national plan for cooperation of all key players in developing the local economy. The King focuses his address on six major contributors to boost the economy. They include sustainable and renewable energy and to ensure the people are not affected by fluctuations in prices of oil. Efforts to implement the Renewable Energy Roadmap of Tonga should reduce the impact of rising oil prices but to help raise the standard of living and national development. In efforts to help the people, His Majesty cites the new assistance program to the elderly people since last year. He further notes efforts to create job opportunities for students and people with various challenges. The King also speaks about the need for an improved business operation policies to enable development efforts of the private sector and the creation of more jobs. In tourism, he is hopeful of additional benefits for Tonga through the establishment of the Tourism Authority. He hopes that marketing opportunities, revenue and more jobs for the people should be created, even though other sectors like fishery and agriculture are facing various challenges. In technical training, His Majesty says the continuation of the maritime program will generate more opportunities for youth to even secure jobs overseas. He also says the seasonal workers scheme with Australia and New Zealand is an opportunity for Tongans to work overseas and is hopeful that similar schemes would be established with other countries. He urged for more efforts to develop and expand such opportunities for his people. The King also acknowledges work on the National Retirement Scheme and to efforts to boost the social benefits for people who have excelled in their areas of profession. He also stresses that the next generations should be guaranteed a safe and peaceful environment. His Majesty also expresses his gratitude to overseas assistance towards the development of Tonga, including the governments of Australia, New Zealand, People's Republic of China, the European Union, the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank. The King then reiterates to the Speaker the importance for all members of the House to work together to move Tonga forward and to maintain efforts to create more opportunities based on sustainable growth. Attending the ceremony was the Honourable Prime Minister of Tonga, Lord Divirano, the Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, Sami Vaipolo, Speaker of the House, Lord Fafanua, members of the Legislative Assembly, Church leaders, chief justice, nobles of the realm, diplomatic corps, and many guests. His Majesty King Debo VI again has officiated at a special ceremony marking the United States Independence Day. The early celebration was held on Thursday evening. Sinlanto was there and filed this report. His Majesty King Debo VI officiating ceremony at the Maysville Naval Base in Doliki. 
Speaking on behalf of the Kingdom and the Government of Tonga, the Prime Minister, Lord Duvakano, acknowledged the strong ties between the two countries. Since the United States of America first recognized the Kingdom of Tonga in 1886, the partnership between our two countries has broadened and deepened on shared values and enhanced cooperation on bilateral, regional and international issues. Independence Day is commemorated annually on July 4th, but Tonga decides to mark it early during the presence of the American Ambassador to Tonga, Her Excellency Frankie Reed. In her speech to mark the occasion, Her Excellency said the President of America, Barack Obama, fully supports America's close ties with Tonga. We are proud of our strong rapport and collaborative efforts with the Kingdom of Tonga. That has helped us address important regional and global issues such as health, poverty, alleviation, and environmental protection. As President Obama has said, Tonga is one of the United States' closest partners. Our relationship with Tonga is important to the United States, a relationship we hope will continue to be strengthened. Attending the ceremony was the Speaker of Parliament, Lord Fafanua, Commander of the U.S. Deployment in Nukalofa for the Pacific Partnership Program, Commodore Wallace Lovely, Ministers of the Crown, members of the Diplomatic Corps, and many guests. A cake ceremony was also held to mark the U.S. Independence Day carried out by the Speaker of Parliament, Lord Fafanua, and Her Excellency Frankie Reid. For Television Tonga News, I'm Sin Lato. The Honourable Prime Minister, Speaker of the Legislative Assembly and some of the parliamentarians have raised the importance for members of the House to work together in supporting economic and social activities aiming to encourage and assist the people of Tonga, as stated in His Majesty's speech from the throne to officially open the 2013th Legislative Assembly. Piala Olakai with the details. Some members of the Legislative Assembly have the same belief concerning issues raised in His Majesty's speech from the throne during the official opening of this year's Parliament. It includes collaboration among members of the House in making an effort to help the people in regards to their welfare, as the Honourable Prime Minister, Lord Tuivarano, explains. <laughs> The content of His Majesty's speech is all true, and I believe the main thing to do by the Legislative Assembly is for its members to work in good relationship, like people's representatives and the government, so that we can move forward with our development activities. We can understand in His Majesty's speech from the throne the impact of the world financial crisis on Tonga's economic situation. But we need to help the people and the private sector as they are the important keys for boosting of the economy. So that is one of the essential works for us members of the House to do what's best for everyone. I know there were issues that hindered and hold back some of the economic activities and development programs last year due to the vote of no confidence after 18 months from the election of the new government. But the speech from the throne has stated that us members of the House should come together and try to move forward with all economic and social development activities. Meanwhile, the Speaker of the Legislative Assembly has talked about today's special occasion and further elaborates on issues brought up during the last Parliament session. First of all, I would like to thank His Majesty's speech from the throne. We have a committee working on the response to the speech from the throne. It will be put forward into the House tomorrow, and hopefully it can be done by tomorrow, so that we will move on, the, uh, move on to discuss the budget on Monday. I was appointed as Speaker of the House during the discussion of, on the vote of no confidence last year. It was a difficult time for me, but I was happy that we managed to handle it properly, and I want to see better work this year comparing to the challenges that we have encountered last year. Meanwhile, the number three Tongatapu's People's 
Representative Dr. Steven Nihalapua said it is vital for them to work according to His Majesty's wishes. It's an honor for us to hear His Majesty's speech from the throne, and I believe there is a need for everyone to be concerned about His Majesty's wishes, as His Majesty has emphasized the importance of the economic and other development activities carried out by the government. So it's a speech for us, for the government, and for us members of the House, and for everyone, to further combine forces in improving our economy. The second point is about the straightforward advice from His Majesty about the importance of working as a team, and that's how I interpret His Majesty's speech, to enforce the need for further collaboration among members of the House as we need success in our daily activities. After the official opening of the Parliament, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Infrastructure, Honorable Sami Waipulu, also explained about some of the development programs conducted by the government during the current financial year. <laughs> Work on road maintenance is well underway according to the budget. We have also managed to settle issues regarding the list of the airport where there was a need for a financial support from the World Bank. We also thank donors who have supported us financially and technically on various development activities involving the government of Singapore. They have helped with training of our maritime people in some of the programs at our maritime polytechnic institute as well as Tonga civil aviation programs. I also want to thank the Chinese government for donating us an airplane to assist our local airline transport. Those development activities are all aiming to help with the locals' need. It includes providing employment to our local people. Meanwhile, the number one people's representative to parliament, Aglisipo Hiva, said eight days for the discussion on the budget is too short. We just received the budget and we do not have enough time to discuss it. There should be enough time for us. For instance, we should have discussed it a month before the end of the financial year. But according to Paul Hiva, it did not take them long when they discussed last year's budget as they wanted to move on and discuss the vote of no confidence. And for the Minister of Internal Affairs, they've witnessed the willing from the public to closely work together with the government on various activities. In this new ministry, we have Women Affairs, Youth and Sports, Employment and Department for District and Town Offices. So there are about five to six departments under the Ministry of Internal Affairs. We have managed to work together with the public on various programs involving community development activities. The Honourable Prime Minister Lord Divano in his inaugural speech to mark the arrival of the fibre optic cable to its landing station at Sopota for Ahau this week praised the new epoch of communication that has arrived at our shores. This was during a special ceremony to mark the connection of the cable to its headquarter office, Tonga Cable Limited. After one and a half week, the fibre optic cable connected from Suma, Fiji to Tonga arrived in Nukalofa. This will enable better quality communication. A special ceremony to mark the occasion was held at the landing station attended by the Honourable Prime Minister, Lord Tuivakano. Today marks the arrival of the submarine cable for the first time ever. There has been a vision and a plan for this important project and today it arrives safely into our shores. It is a blessing for the kingdom. This too provides more opportunities for Tonga and as planned, the internet will be faster, more capacity and cheaper. Everyone will have a chance to be connected at any time, anywhere. Improved and more affordable connectivity lowers transaction costs 
creates new economic opportunities and increases services delivery options. Meanwhile, the Honorable Deputy Prime Minister Sami Waibulu says these are the foundations of development in communications. Lord Prime Minister, the landing of the cable would be one of the cornerstones of that development and the wish of government to enable the private sector. This project is to the tune of 66 million per anga. 80% of this money is funded by the World Bank together with the Asian Development Bank and 20% is funded by Tonga Communication Corporation or TCC. The local representative of Asian Development Bank and the World Bank, Saya Faletau, says this initiative will open doors for more economic and social opportunities in the future. Tonga's isolation and other constraints to economic development may be mitigated in part by improved access to and more affordable telecommunication, especially high-speed broadband internet, which offers new economic opportunities domestically as well as connection to larger markets and new avenue for delivery of services nationally and internationally. The first phase of this project is now complete and the second phase is connecting this cable from Nukalofa to the Outer Islands which will commence later. For Television Tonga News, I'm Sin Lato. The Honourable Salote Mamotaimitu Aho has donated blood to the Blood Bank of the Ministry of Health this week to mark the World Blood Donor Day, June 14th. This was during a special program to commemorate the day at Viola with a theme Every blood donation is a gift of life. Similar programs were also held at the outer islands of Hapai, Vava'o, Ewa, where the governor of Vava'o, Lord Fulivai, also donated blood to the Vava'o Blood Bank. Honorable Salote Mamotaimitu Aho officiates at a special program to mark the World Blood Donor Day and carry out the official duty of the cake ceremony. Meanwhile, Dr. Eka Bodromo from the Ministry of Health says, a lot of patients at the hospital needs blood. Most of our developing countries, including Tonga, is still struggling with this problem. We are still losing lives due to shortage of blood and we depend more on family replacement donors or relatives to come and donate for the patients who need blood in the hospitals. Also at the program was the local representative of WHO, Dr. Lee Dan. World Health Organization, WHO, encouraged all countries to highlight stories <coughs> from people whose life have been saved through blood transfusion as a way of motivating regular blood donors to continue giving blood and people in good health who have never given blood, particularly young people to begin doing so. Other people also volunteered to donate blood in response to the importance of the day. This is the 10th year World Blood Donor Day is marked in the Kingdom. The Ministry of Health and the Tonga Red Cross Society jointly organise the event. The Honourable Prime Minister, Lord Devano, has this week marked Tonga's first commemoration of the International Archives Day, June 10th. This year's ceremony highlighted a theme, preserving past and present information for the future. Joining the program were several libraries, museums and archives from both government and non-government organizations. This is to create public awareness, recognition and appreciation of work of archives, museums and libraries in Tonga. In a remark from the Honorable Prime Minister, Lord Devano, he says, this is to promote the importance of preservation and safeguarding of historical materials, artifacts, and landmarks for the future. Highlights Tonga commitment to the start, the government's work towards better records management system and information infrastructures. While today will remind us of the importance of our history, our heritage, and our traditional pride. Through the information we keep and maintain, the government of Tonga is pleased to acknowledge the work begun by the public, private, and church sectors 
in preserving archives and history over the last centuries. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister Sami Waipulo says Tonga's participation in a global event was a push towards freedom of information and making easier access to relevant information needed. We have now all come to realize that it is not just information that we need, it is our history and our pride and our identity. We need to preserve them, safeguard them, not only for us here today, but for our children of the future. Attending the ceremony was the Honourable Minister of Internal Affairs, Lord Vaya, church leaders, diplomatic corps, government personnel and many guests. Cabinet has approved the 2013-2014 budget estimate on the theme continuing to create opportunities by building on inclusive, sustainable growth. A statement from the Ministry of Finance and National Planning says Cabinet approved the new budget estimate on Friday, May 31st. It has been submitted to the Speaker of the Legislative Assembly, Lord Fafanua, Friday, June 7th. According to the new statement, government has a clear plan to build a growing economy in order to create more jobs and increase incomes in the face of ongoing economic uncertainty in the world. The budget estimate therefore focuses on the priority sectors that are consistent with the Tonga Strategic Development Framework priorities and also articulated on the budget strategy, namely private sector development, community development, productive and effective public sector, and sustainable fiscal consolidation. The total appropriation in a budget which covers all cash transactions is uh, 249.1 million, of which 198.8 million is government control, financed from government revenue plus budget support of 335.7 million and 50.3 million for development projects financed from cash grants from development partners. There will be no increase in revenue fees and charges except that school fees of government schools are expected to rise in the first term of 2015. A special ceremony to mark the Pacific Partnership 2013 was marked this week at the Maceville Naval Base in Doliki. It is part of Tonga and United States Defense Force Partnership Program that helped those who are less fortunate. The inaugural ceremony was held after the arrival of the USS Pearl Harbor from America in Tonga. It brings with it experts in health and other equipment to assist them in a the project. Sinlato reports. Present at this special program were the Honourable Prime Minister of Tonga, Lord Tuivakano, the Speaker of the House, Lord Fafanua, together with the United States Ambassador to Tonga, Her Excellency Frankie Reid. USS Pearl Harbor docked at Tonga's waters has brought with it more than 700 soldiers, doctors, nurses and volunteer civilians from Europe, Asia and the Pacific. In the Honourable Prime Minister's address, he says this is a huge assistance to Tonga which will boost the ties of the two countries. The alternation and provision of information, exchange and skill transfer needed relief to our people and the assistance in these areas that we are not always able to meet financially and technically. On board the American ship are equipment which will be used in this development programs together with food for the personnel. According to Commander Captain Wallace Lovely, this will strengthen ties of the military officers. The relationships built and sustained through multi-agency, multinational teams enhance our ability to rapidly respond and work collectively in support of emergency humanitarian assistance and disaster relief during times of disaster and crisis so that we can execute and execute well. Put simply, this mission allows us to prepare and calm so that we may execute effectively during crisis. The USS Pearl Harbor will be in Tonga with its passengers for 10 days. Also present at the inaugural event were nobles, parliamentarians, leaders of different ministries, personnel traveling on the American ship and many guests. For Television Tonga News, I'm Sinatu. 
Meantime, the Pacific Partnership Project began with the construction work of classrooms at the La Baja Government Primary Schools. Sid Lanta was there and filed this report. The United States Ambassador to Tonga, Her Excellency Frankie Reed, visited the Government Primary School of La Baja, whilst construction work is underway. Her Excellency Reed, was a former teacher in West Africa for two years, is delighted to visit the project site in the eastern side of Tongatapu. She says the classroom is almost as important as the lessons taught to the students. I believe that education and building a safe and secure environment for our children to learn and prosper is critical in their development. And I commend the construction work that's been undertaken by Pacific Partnership and the partners on the ground to make a positive change for the young children who attend La Paja Primary School and will no doubt have a positive impact on their future. Whilst visiting, the ambassador presented a gift, a book about America to the school, and was received by one of the teachers, Elisabetta Valupe. Another teacher, Dulu Kavaifiafi, says the assistant is very useful to the school. We are grateful, the principal, teachers, and the PTA, of the assistant to build three new classrooms. The PTA also funded to build an extra classroom, making it four new classrooms. Why we are grateful? Because there are more students in the school, but the classrooms are small. Leading the team of carpenters from Tonga Defense Service is Sergeant Osayasi B.A. and joined by residents of La Paja. Carpenters from the U.S. Defense Force will join the work tomorrow. These new classrooms will be completed by next week. This is the third time Tonga has received assistance from this program. Also fortunate for this program are Samoa, Kiribati, Solomon Islands and the Marshall Islands. For Television Tonga News, I'm Simnato. The foundation laying ceremony of a new village hall for Tequiu has been held thanks to the Pacific Partnership 2013. This is a partnership program of the United States Defense Force and the Tonga Defense Force. This is a new epoch for the village. A special ceremony was held to mark this development was attended by the Honorable Prime Minister Lord Duvrano, the Honorable Deputy Prime Minister Sami Waipolo, the U.S. Ambassador to Tonga, Her Excellency Frankie Reed, Commodore Wallace Lovely of the U.S. Army, as well as many guests. According to the town officer of Tekiu, Lofanga Fahmukioa, they are fortunate of this assistance. We've been meeting in a church hall, but this would be the first time to work towards the new village hall. We pledge our support towards this community work, which would become a centre for the villagers. The construction work will start in August and to run until December. The Degu Hall is the second project under the Pacific Partnership 2013, which follows the building of classrooms for the Government Primary School of La Paja. The Government Primary School of Atele will also receive similar assistance. The Pacific Partnership Program also provides medical assistance for the people in the villages. The Honourable Prime Minister, Lord Divano, led the team of delegations from the government of Tonga that was toured around the Ilay de Rey French cable ship. The new Caledonian-based vessel has departed Tonga this week to Fiji. Lord Divano was followed by the Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, Honourable Sami Waipulu, the Honourable Minister for Commerce, Tourism and Labour, Dr. William Milatu, the President of the Free Within Church of Tonga, Reverend Dr. Ahio, media personnel and others. The Captain of the French ship, Sean Marlowe Brandt Kazao, says they are happy to inform high-ranking leaders in Tonga of their responsibilities. We were asked to organise uh, an event to present the ship to show what we know what we know, uh, what is our business, uh, what our competencies. So it's a good, it's a great honor to to host this on board because we have skilled, as you have seen during this tour, uh, on board the vessel. We have a lot of different nationalities, different jobs, different history, and all those people together make the cable lay. Um, it's not only one uh, surveyor job, one deck job, one uh, ROV job, or ev even uh, any job, but everybody together, we do this, we can do this lay. 
He adds the French cable ship is fully equipped to carry out different work, including maintenance of the cable. The maintenance agreement is a contract involving a lot of um, customers, so not only Tonga Cable, but it could be uh, we have Southern Cross, we have basically all the cables in the South Pacific, so it's like a consortium, and if there's a problem with the cable, there will be a, a complaint, but it's not actually a complaint, they will try to find a solution first, and if we really have to, to repair the cable, it will be sent to an office, I, uh, to be honest, I don't know it, and Alcatel-Lucent will be informed, and we will, we, they will ask Alda Marine, which is uh, the company managing the vessel, together with Louis Refus Armateur, which is a French ship owner, um, who manned the vessel, and uh, those, um, Alda Marine will say, okay, now you go to do this repair, so the vessel will stay, will sail. We have a 24 hours uh, notice before to sail. There were 60 crew members on board the ship. For Television Tonga News, I'm Sin La Tu. The estate holder of Vato Lord Ivano urged the newly installed Boleikwa Vato to be responsible of his new duties bestowed upon him, to love his people and noble, for this will promote peace among the community. This was delivered by Lord Ivano's talking chief, Tawa Kiloto, during the installation of the new Boleiku. Pierre Oli reports. Families, friends and residents of Vatu cheered and supported for newly installed Boleiku, who used to be known by the name Feletti Eke. Mr. Eke is replacing the late Boleiku, who passed away in April this year. I represent the estate holder in his good spirit to appoint you, Fletieke, to the talking chief title of Puleiku. The cover is a covenant with God in the presence of people. Love the people and your duties, and you will witness peace in the village. The crowd also and the Puleiku that obedience is an important factor of being a leader. This was a dream come true. Lord Duvarno, you've blessed my family with this great honor, and we are fortunate of it. May Buleku fulfill his job to the utmost. Buleku is the eldest son of Lady Isaki Valueke and Sendilaeke of Vadu'u. He is married to Melianeke with three children. During the same program, five chiefly titles of Vaisio Ata, Makali Singia, Vaiudoku Talafekau, Amohekonokono, and Fengafono were also bestowed among the villagers. Pierre Olier for Television Tonga News. Police has re arrested a man aged 39 of Fangaloto who has escaped from custody about three weeks ago. He was arrested together with another man whose house in the floor was where the escapee was re arrested from. Sinato reports. The escaped detainee was rearrested from a home in the central district. This is according to Deputy Police Commissioner Kolale Osuakai in an interview with television Tonga News. The escaped detainee is the 39-year-old Hermani Lopeti. Police rearrested him in a home in Tofua yesterday afternoon. We also arrested another man whose house in Tofua where Lopeti was rearrested from. Meanwhile, police is still searching for the other detainee who escaped from custody, Amoni Fifita, 29 years of Kanokpolu. There were crimes committed whilst the two detainees escaped. Despite the two men are suspected to have committed some of those crimes, but police are investigating these matters. The Deputy Police Commissioner also warned public that it is a crime to help an escaped detainee, especially hiding them in their homes. She also asked for any information from the public that might help find Amoni Fifita. The duo were accused of theft, housebreak and entry and were scheduled to appear in court at a later date. The men escaped from a police vehicle three weeks ago. For Television Tonga News, I'm Sin La Tu. Tonga is one of the first countries in the Pacific to use a new form of surgery to remove kidney stone, thanks to a team of surgeons from Australia. Pierre Ollier reports. Dr. Philip Mackay is one of the surgeons visiting Tonga, said the recovery time for patients operated using the new technique is faster. He emphasized the importance of drinking a lot of water and avoiding drinking of a lot of tea 
and consuming a lot of chocolate because they contain chemicals that contribute to kidney stone. This is an example of a stone in the kidney. This is the, the big white dot is the stone. The sort of outer parts are the meaty parts of the kidney. So we make the hole directly into that. We could break that up into say five or six little bits, pull the bits out. To get a bit of a stone like that would take about an hour and the patient can usually go home the next day. He said the normal procedure usually takes 7 to 12 days for the patient to recover. The two-member team is in Nukalofa under the OS8 assistance. The best thing about this visit is the fact that we've brought new surgery to the Pacific, which uh, has not been available uh, in the Pacific uh, at all. Uh, surgery that's been in uh, Australia and New Zealand for 20 years, and now it's the uh, first time here. Uh, and it'll be the standard way we fix big kidney stones. But the, um, the other thing I've noticed uh, coming over three years is the uh, upgrading of the staff how, for our specialty of urology. Uh, they're becoming more competent, more confident, uh, and uh, the work that we do here is now almost routine for them. The surgery team was in Tonga due to assistance from OS8. Reporting for Television Tonga, I'm Pierre Audi. An Asian woman has been charged for carrying out medical work without a doctoral certificate approved from the Ministry of Health. This is according to the prosecutor, Memalato. Speaking to radio and television Tonga News, the prosecutor says the accused have no reason for using doctoral authority either carrying out several doctoral work without a certificate of doctor. The Ministry of Health therefore report Win Lin Wei to police. Ms Lin Wei works at a private clinic licensed under a certified doctor in previous years, but has replaced a doctor and continued operation under the same license since 2012. Lin Wei will reappear at the Magistrate Court next Monday, represented by her counsel, Sione Etika. The Honourable Minister of Finance and National Planning, together with Australia's High Commissioner to Tonga, His Excellency Brett Aldham, signed a 17.65 million per Anga donation from the Government of Australia to Tonga Education Support Programme. Also present was the Honourable Minister of Education and Training, Dr. Anatao Fiongaki. This donation is part of the Government of Australia's initiative to deliver a higher quality education in the Kingdom. The Honourable Minister for Finance, Lisiate Akolo, pointed out how important it is to develop education in Tonga despite the challenges. We are delighted that Australia recognises the importance of supporting the development of our education. Despite our tight physical conditions, it is essential that we can continue to upgrade the quality of education to ensure that we have students that have the skills to meet the demands uh, from the private sector to support a growing and changing economy. Government also needs a better skilled public servants to improve the quality of government services delivered with more transparency and accountability as demanded by our new political system. In the meantime, the Honourable Minister for Education and Training, Honourable Dr. Anna Taufe Ulungaki, pledged for improvements on the children's access to quality education. The Ministry must see to it that implementation and evaluation processes are effective and efficient, activities are adequately monitored, and that regular and timely reports of progress, success stories, challenges and outcomes are made. In other words, the Ministry must ensure that all Tongan children in the universe of basic education years have access to, experience and successfully complete quality basic education. His Excellency Brett Aldham says the launch of the second phase of TESP reflect a shared commitment to deliver high quality education in between the two countries. Um, and so we're now really at the threshold of a very significant second phase of the, of the uh, Tongan education support program which recognises the, the key importance of education to development and to allowing Tonga and countries of the Pacific <coughs> to shape their future. Uh, it recognises, I think, the, the, the importance of having a high quality education system that's responsive to the needs of teachers and students and that gives them the building blocks that they will need um, for the future. 
This assistance follows Australia's recent direct budget support of 8.7 million paanga to Tonga to assist with salaries of health and education sector. For Television Tonga News, I'm Sinatu. And that wraps up this evening's Tonga This Week. Thank you all for joining us. I'm Fatai Fenga. Good evening. Thank you.